bye. Uh, uh huh. I feel start this one, sir. Sing it, damn it. Boys are bread all week. Miss it. Yeah, time is money. I do have it yet again. My name is Joe Osayado, and I happen to be the chairman of RK Africa. And, um, Today is a very special day, not only because we have such extraordinary panelists, but we have also been very fortunate to get a grant to create a new program called the a Creative Force, which is being sponsored and funded by the Prince Klaus Fund in the Netherlands. We're very, very pleased about that. Um, what the Creative Force is attempting to do is to move the talk shop to the workshop where we are now going to send um, young volunteers, professionals, design professionals into the field to engage in Africa's development agenda. So in a way, it's like a peace corps for designers, architects, graphics people, artists, um, product de designers and so forth. And we will place them in, let's say, Tamale Assembly, where they are doing, there's a street uh, improvement so we can have a, a, a mini competition of sorts to design bus shelters that reflect the culture and uh, the context of Tamale, things like that. So all the things that we keep talking about as to why design matters, we hope to be able to implement some of these ideas over the next few years. We've had great partners. Um, next slide please. So we want to, to get young designers to recognize that they need to be part of Africa's development agenda. It cannot be left to lawyers and bankers alone. We have a role to play. Uh, we have partners like Play Soccer Ghana, who have the FIFA uh, fo Football for Hope um, Academy in, um, in Cape Coast, and we're working with them. AFS Ghana, uh, we also, we are going to be working with um, Yale Alumni Association on the Yamranza project and um, AMA, Tamale Assembly and so forth. We're very, very excited about being able to get all of you to, to go out and you know, Ghana is not about Accra. It's about the regions. This is where the real action needs to be. And I'm thrilled that, next slide, um, RP Africa through its Creative Force program can truly engage in the field. This is what, um, a Wahab from Football Before Hope. This is a building that I actually designed out of shipping containers and bamboo many years ago. Next, next slide. And we're going to be doing the next phase of their project. We are going to have master uh, architects and designers come from all, all over the world. And the first one who will be coming this year is Francis Carey from Burkina Faso, who will be having some workshops here in Ghana with the design professionals. Next slide. And so, so anyway, without saying too much, it's wonderful to start 2014 on a very bright note and it's been many years with all of you as friends of Arche Africa and we hope this great discourse and salon will continue. On that note I'll hand over to Kofi Blanson. Hi, good evening everybody. Thank you very much for being here. I just managed to get here by the skin of his teeth. He was stuck in Nigeria till just a few minutes ago. So welcome Joe. Thanks for being here. It's a very special evening tonight. Uh, this is about the 50th one of these events and uh, we've done and they seem to be getting better and better. Uh, so you're in for a treat. Uh, this evening we're really, really honored to be with some very special people and I, I feel a, a special sense of ownership. The first thing that I want to really acknowledge is that Joe is a, a theoretician of design himself and could be on the panel. I just happen to be a consumer of design. When somebody asked what was good design, the only thing I could say was to remember what uh, Supreme Court in the U.S., uh, the justice said, was asking about obscenity. So I don't know what it is, but I can recognize it when I see it. <laughs> and that's the way I feel about design, that I don't know what it is, but I can recognize it when I see it. I'm so sorry. I mean, this is so rude. I mean, AID is made possible by the Golden Tulip Hotel chain. And in my exhausted state flying in from Port Harcourt, it's been a very extraordinary evening trying to get here. I need to introduce the people who make this happen. The chairman of uh, Gooden Tulip is here, he'll be joining us later, but his trusted assistants and leaders, the, the new G uh, G uh, GM, Francis, this is his first AID. We thank you for opening this up for us. 
and we really appreciate your continued support. Thank you. Always supported us and made us happen. And very well, we thank you. 2014 will be a great year for, for both the hotel and then for us. All the best. Thank you. So after doing all that, we can get back to business. A point of taking people to his uh, atelier when they were leaving Ghana so they could take a piece of Kofi Ansa in Ghana with them. Uh, Kofi Ansa, let me tell you a little bit about him. He is uh, a renowned uh, fashion designer, um, both innovative and creative. He has been credited with uh, being the face of uh, fashion for the Ghanaian fashion landscape and is by far, even though B might dispute this, the leader in the field of African fashion design. He's a founding member as well as a president of the Federation of African Designers. Can we give him a big hand? <laughs> On the panel with uh, Kofi is B. Arthur. Uh, and again, somebody I feel a great deal of kinship with. We've uh, spent countless hours on Facebook saying unprintable things about the world, about design, about everything. Unprintable. B embarrassed me this evening at dinner, just before we came here. She, was, she said, oh, I know Kofi, Kofi's a very good friend of mine. And then she said, to make sure to say, but I don't know him carnally. I thought B, I mean, why couldn't you just leave that hanging out there? <laughs> but anyway, so B is a wonderful person, uh, an illustrious Ghanaian fashion designer whose brilliant career spans over 17 years. She's still only 32. Uh, she took the fashion world by surprise when she won the Cora All African Fashion Award in 201 in Sun City. And since then, these eclectic collections have graced the runways of many fashion capitals on the continent and beyond. Most recent shows, which were Afric Chic Collection 2010 Cameroon, Dakar Fashion Week 2011, Senegal. For those of you who don't know that Dakar is in Senegal. <laughs> Chris Seydou Fashion Week 2011 in Mali. Malabo Fashion Week 2012 in Equatorial Guinea. Nigerian Fashion Week, I mean basically all of West Africa. Uh, the Fafa Pan-African uh, Fashion Show for Peace, 2012 in Kenya. In 2012, very importantly, B. Arthur received the African Women of Worth Award for Excellence in Creative Fashion Design. Can we give a big hand, please? And uh, squaring off against two titans of Fashion design is a guy who definitely can hold his own anywhere. Augustus Richardson belongs to a generation of uh, emerging architects who see in architects who see in architecture the power for social and infrastructural transformation. Based in Accra, Richardson reveals how the architectural landscape of Ghana teams with opportunities for emerging architects, especially those who hold the radical vision to engage in architecture that triggers positive change. Recognizing the, the, the vast potential Ghana holds in this year of architectural revolution, Richardson helps us to understand those points where traditional art forms and materials converge with modern techniques to create sustainability and flexibility. In his view, Ghana's future is bright, something I agree with, particularly when shot through the optics of architecture. Augustus Richardson speaks on design, Mobius Architecture, his firm with Samadabi, and one of their latest projects, The Bridge. Can we give our guests a big hand? Not last but not least, to, to harness all this creative energy and keep it pointing in the right direction, we have to pick somebody who both understands the impulses of creative design and is also engaged in uh, design in his own field. So uh, M. Dot Anifest said manifest. <laughs> I was trying to be creative here. <laughs> you tried. I did, right? Thank you. Manifest is an internationally acclaimed award-winning musician from Accra, Ghana. Big up for Accra. 
Hey, you know I can say that. In 2013, he won the Best Rapper of the Year award at the Ghana Music Awards. Only a year after being tipped by BBC's The Strand as one of four artists to watch in the world. Described as Ghana's Rapper Supreme by Rita Ray of the BBC, manifest originality, lyricism, flow, and depth in content has made him one of the contemporary Africa's best kept secrets. But not after this evening. After this evening, the whole world will know him. You know, another creative category, moderator for this evening. So without really uh, hogging the limelight for much longer, let me hand over to Manifest. Manifest, your show. I mean, that's what we do these days. You design your own biography <laughs> so that nobody can uh, tell your own story for you. Um, but it's an honor for me to moderate uh, this panel today. I'm not going to take any more so much knowledge around me that I'm looking forward to hear from. You're going to hear a lot today that's going to be insightful, that will be colorful, that will be honest, and hopefully you also contribute to it. So we're going to spend, I think, the first hour uh, with our panelists probing into their minds and how, why, they, why they think design matters and also probing into their work and anecdotes and various examples and fascinating insights that they have for us. So I'm just going to launch into some questions straight away without further ado. Can I do that? Yeah, sure. I, I need to know me in my line of work. I always need to feel people around me. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so th this first question is to all of you um, and hopefully maybe within five or six minutes you can give us some insights. Um, this first question is what is design and why does it matter and why are we even talking about it tonight? Okay. Um, no need for me to reintroduce myself. I'm the author. Um, I've been designing for many years. Um, honestly, when I started designing, I never really saw it as a profession. It was more something that was intuitive, something that I did probably for fun. Um, I later realized that I could, um, you know, I got an audience. There were people who actually liked what I did. So I did it for myself. I didn't start it. It was not a, a commercial decision. It was something that I did because I thought there was a void. Kofi Ansa was too expensive for me at the time. I could not afford his absolutely gorgeous garments. He made these wonderful kente dresses, mini dresses for co cocktail dresses. I love them. And uh, I couldn't afford them. So I decided that um, the best thing for me would be to probably start, um, since I couldn't sew, uh, was to probably recycle my um, existing outfits. And uh, since childhood, uh, I do come from um, a family of artistically inclined people. So for me, it was very easy to pick up a brush and buy a few bottles of fabric paint and um, start sort of redesigning my own clothing. So that's that's my introduction into design. I perceive myself more of an artist. I do it for the love of it and and making money out of it was uh, secondary. Uh, I did make some money out of it, I must confess. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's because uh, probably um, I was, I, people thought me I was scandalous, that I was a you know, attention seeker, my hair was 25 different colors and all that kind of things and you know, at the time Ghana was pretty conservative. I mean, now you're walking around with lovely locks and everybody thinks you are normal. Back in the day they would have thought you are wulomo or fetish or you are smoking joints every night, you know, and so, uh, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously for me for me personally uh, to be a good designer apart from the, the technical aspect of it of course well you know we, we, we at some stage if we want to we can distinguish between artists and designers because uh, design must be it must be functional if it's a bad design it wouldn't work design means you have a target you are doing something with a purpose art is not always so Art is its own purpose. It's emotional, it's uh, mysterious, you know, and it's, it's a goal in itself. However, when you talk of design, it seems more 
purposeful, more orchestrated, and it has to be done in such a way that you, you know, it can be, if it's not useful, if it's not functional, if it's not beneficial, then it's a useless design. And we don't use that same kind of criteria for, for, for art. Uh, we need both. And to be a good designer, you definitely must be an artist. As far as I'm concerned, everybody must be an artist before they can be anything else. You need to be an artist to be a chef. You need to be an artist to be a horticulturist. You need to be an artist to be a mason, otherwise the walls will be crooked. You know, you need to be an, honestly, you need to be an artist to be a plastic surgeon. You need to be an artist to do anything that you do in life. You need to be an artist to be a writer, to be a poet, to be a singer. So basically what we don't realize is that we're actually, uh, those of us who are good at what we do, uh, it's because we are artists, you know, primarily. So we are all artists. <laughs> So um, to round it off, basically, I think um, art, design, you know, two, two sides of the same coin, inseparable. And we need design uh, because basically it's the only way to innovation. It's the only way to progress. You know, every, Kofi Ansa said I shouldn't use the word wood. Um, every epoch had its own design. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when we talk of, uh, I did mention this to Augustus, and actually in certain languages when you say something is design, uh, that word alone means that it's something innovative, something sleek, something refined, you know, something streamlined, so it's not cluttered. So that's what design represents uh, to me. And I think on, on this note, I'll pass the mic to Augustus. Wonderful. Thanking you know the AID and Aki Africa. Um, the the reason I'm doing that is I, you know, the kind of people who've been here and I've been sitting in the crowd watching um, Francis Carey, who I have great respect for as an architect, uh, and David Ajay. And so when I got the invite, it was really I was wondering what can I even offer and, and what is Joe thinking about. But um, I'm happy to be here. Um, I think the question is, you know, why does design matter? So it's important um, to define design in some sort of sense. Um, you read a lot and all the great architects have some description for design, but I think for me, um, the description of what design is came some four years ago um, when I was running an internship in the office and one of the many students who came by because every time I kept saying good design so again per the topic uh, manifest if you allow me I think it's um, why good design matters because there's also bad design so I'm just uh, you know, uh, trying to get it right he, he, he kept asking what is good design and I think I sat there for about a minute and thought about it mathematically and then wrote an equation <laughs> you know um, that good design is equal to good design but remove one O and it becomes the God design um, and I think what I told him was that you know it's it, design is linked to nature um, everything that man has created has come from that inspiration um, and I link it strongly to that creator God who puts it in us I mean people call it genius but it gets to a point where you have to come up with an idea and sometimes I don't know if you share with me you sleep and wake up the next morning and everything is resolved in some sort of manner you need that genius you need that spark so that became my definition uh, what simply also goes to say that it's linked to everything that we see it's it's everything around us is designed the chairs you are sitting in is designed um the clothes you are wearing is designed the lights the lighting system the building we are in is designed so design is really critical um, when you think about it when i read it one of the um uh, descriptions that came out that made it even drive it even home was um that design is intelligence made visible all right so everything that we do, everything that is in our mind, we have to be able to find a way of articulating that to explain you know, our feelings, our emotions, our concepts and our philosophies. And going to your question about how it is we approach it, I am uh, um, I'm a stickler for anybody who comes to my office, it's really about the philosophy and the concept that you are about. If, if that concept and philosophy doesn't really resound with what we are doing, it's going to be very hard for us to work together. 
um, and I mean that for clients and for students. So I think that philosophy is a very critical thing, it's a very simple thing. I think throughout teaching, um, people sort of confuse it, but I, I, I think it's very simple. It's um, your belief systems. So if you're a Muslim, you're a Muslim. That's your philosophy. If you're a Christian, you're a Christian. But when you come into architecture, we start sort of linking it to you know the modernist movement, um, contemporary architecture, brutalist, you know, all the various types. So that is the core. You need to sort of have what you are about. And then based on what a client um, no, based on what a client's uh, brief is, uh, based on what a client's site and location is, and all the research that you do, you need to sort of take all of that in mix with your philosophy and create a concept that suits his budget. Um, so, I mean, in, in and relating it to architecture and skewing in, I think that this is my response to what architecture is and, uh, and what design is. Thank you. Great um, definitions of design. <laughs> The, the, the epochs of design, and <laughs> the periods, and now that I'm lost for words. <laughs> you see, um, I've read a lot about design. I love design. Some people even call me a designer, but I forgive them. <laughs> I'm just trying to make a living. But, uh, what, what, what is design? Um, I went into design, art is my family heritage, yeah. out of the chaos. If you enter a building, there has to be a front door to enter the building. If I enter a building and I cry here and I walk straight into the living room, mm, I think there's something wrong. I need a slight reset before I go into it there. If you go into the office and you put somebody in a bridal gown, uh, I think something is not, I'm not talking about you, here. but I think um, one French uh, philosopher, I think Baudelaire or something like that, I can't remember well, he said to create something new you have to destroy something. Destroying is easy, rebuilding is difficult because Design, as I said, there are rules and regulations. I've got a very highly esteemed friend here who is a justice of the high court. So I have to be very careful what I say about the law. But design avoids anarchy. So I, I don't want to go into the literal sense of design. I've read about design being, you know, what makes uh, innovation uh, productive and all that, people with different ideas. But my daily take on design is how does it benefit us how does it improve our lives because you design a school to let children learn well you design a city to be functional to enhance commerce and business why is new york straight streets they have the avenues and then you have the street the broad is the street and you come to a crowd sometimes getting from a to b it's difficult. So Joe, you got a lot of work to do. <laughs> and um, we really need to study the effects of design to use it to improve our lives. I'm a disciplinarian when it comes to design. I am a perfectionist. When I make a garment to put it on someone, it has to look like that garment was made for that person. She didn't go and borrow it. And so sometimes the client will say, oh, but coffee looks okay. And I go, no, it is not okay. It is not your design. You are just borrowing this garment here to wear. The only difference is you paid me for that privilege. But I'm jealous of my design. Uh, so to me, design, design is life. Uh, as a, my young architect friend here said earlier on, um, I dabbled in a bit of architecture in my spare time, so that's what's lost on me over there. It is a discipline. So how we use it to create a productive existence, maybe that's what we're going to discuss tonight. That's my take on it. Thank you. Wow.
a lot of things coming out already. Um, deliberate versus inspired concept and philosophy. I mean, when I actually heard this uh, topic, I thought it was very exciting and daunting because I mean, when you say uh, why d uh, design matters, you are talking about everything. And as we've witnessed from what they are saying, we're talking about designing legal systems, designing buildings, designing education systems, designing everything. So for me, as much as it's a very exciting topic, at this stage, it's very daunting for me. So can you make it real for us? Can you make us know what good design looks like, what it feels like? Give us some examples in your work and in, in, in your view of, of, of what that is. And I'd like to start with Augustus in this one. Um, thank you. Thank you, Manifest. Um, I think there's a slide that was showing, maybe if you run through that. Yes, yes, please. Um, okay, so let's think about it. What is good design? What does it look like? Um, hmm. Let me use my approach. I think, again, going back to the issue of philosophy, there are those things you believe in and that you cannot sort of separate yourself from. So a lot of young architects, and I'm sure many of them in the, in the audience, will tell you a client will approach and show you an image. All right? I saw this here, and I want this. And I am thankful to say I've never done that. Um, it's a very hard thing to do, because you're going to lose a lot of people who just don't understand what it is. But I think I'll relate it to ourselves as individuals. And I was telling B earlier that I think everybody wants to be unique. And I'll throw the question out to the ladies in, 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 in the crowd. If you came here wearing, and I was asking B, if you came here with this uh, uh, outfit, and we came here and we saw somebody dressed exactly like that. <laughs> that wasn't the answer you gave to me. But you, you, won't be, you won't be too excited about it. You, you want to feel unique. Um, and, and that is evident in everybody. Um, so, and then in not, not to stop you, but can you tell us what we are seeing? Can you go back so that before you continue? Because no, no, I let him keep rolling. I'll come, okay. to, I'll come to you. So, I'm sort of laying a, a foundation. Um, so, I, I've realized that everybody wants to be unique, and it's important then to realize that not everybody wears everything. All right, there are people who love. I love Kofi Ansar's work. I was excited to see him on the panel and just wanted to discuss what it was. And, and, and also be sweat because it's really just out there. But it's not everybody who would like what they are doing. All right? So immediately a designer needs to realize that he has his niche market. I relate it to having friends. There are those who like you. There are those who don't like you or who can't get along with you. So the first thing is you have to realize that just as you look, you, you have those who like you. If you're a designer, it's the same thing. There are those who would flow with your philosophy. So it's for you to keep pushing that agenda and making sure that you meet those people. Um, for me, I, I believe in simplicity. And that's a very complex word in itself. But I, I believe that one has to go to the bare bones. I believe in timelessness. I think that for some of the most beautiful buildings in our landscape, like the Scott House, and I think nobody here who knows the Scott House will say it's not a beautiful building. I was happy to realize that the Scott House was done in 1957. And even now, you would wonder if it was built yesterday. That timelessness spoke to me. I, I was lucky. I went to school at North Ridley like Young. And every day as I drove past that building, I've said this on many platforms, it spoke to me. Um, and I think it's because of it reducing all of it to its objective. Um, and so that's my philosophy. I, I try to create spaces that will resound with a lot more people um, and, and will touch them. And the only way it does that is for you to objectify. If you subjectify and use yellow um, or red, if somebody doesn't like it, he's wondering, do I really like this? So it, it, that sort of governs the design philosophy that we sort of play with uh, over at Mobius Architecture, which is a, f a firm that I run with Samadeli uh, in attendance. Now, with that in mind, we don't start with a form in mind. 